right, I'm Ann Gaviola. Welcome to the Peak on Global, where we break down what's trending in the business world and what you need to know to stay ahead of the curve. Joining me now is Brett Chang from the Peak Podcast. Welcome, Brett. Hey, Ann, great to be with you as always. Okay, let's talk about the U.S. economy, which has now dipped for two quarters in a row. That means a technical recession. Uh, there wasn't a big market reaction to this GDP news. The American president and several lawmakers and economists aren't even using the R word, even though it's pretty clear the U.S. economy is slowing down. What do you think? Well, there's a big debate going on right now about whether or not the U.S. is in recession. And it kind of shows you the complexity of the whole situation that nobody can really come to a consensus as to whether or not they're actually in this period of negative growth. Now, you're right. The technical definition is that it's two quarters of consecutive negative growth, and we're seeing that right now. But what complicates it is that there's also other factors that economists take into consideration when defining a, an economic period of recession. And that's things like job growth and its household spending. And we're not seeing the same impacts on that side of the economy that you would normally see in a recession. So we're in a bit of a stalemate here where no one can really agree. Yeah, well, the way that recessions are decided in the U.S. is that the National Bureau of Economic Research declares them. But I mean, historically, they're really slow. And this usually happens long after the recession has passed. Is this a good system? It's kind of like looking into the rearview mirror a kilometer away and saying, yep, yep, we did hit someone back there. Yeah, well, it depends who you're talking to. So if you're a politician, this is a great system because it means that you can go into for Joe Biden, the upcoming midterms and continue to claim that the U.S. is not in a recession and say that the economy is fine. And so for you, this works out really well. But if you're on the industry side and you're actually looking to plan your business for what's to come, then this is not the ideal system because you would love to have that immediate indicator that we are in a recession and you can make the appropriate adjustments to ensure that you can get through this this difficult period. Final thing before we uh, let go of this, our topic, um, with our economy so intertwined, the U.S. is our largest trading partner. If the U.S. is in the midst of, you know, the start of a slowdown already, can Canada really be far behind? Well, you're absolutely right, Anne, that the U.S. is our larging trading partner and we rely on them for a lot. But most importantly, a lot of businesses rely on them as clients, as partners, as customers. And so if the U.S. does slow down, you're going to see a pull back in that spending. And that's really going to hit the Canadian economy. You're already seeing the impacts of a strong U.S. dollar as well, which is hurting us. And that could be a leading indicator for where the Canadian economy is heading. OK, let's switch gears a little bit. Talk about Meta's first ever revenue decline. This, of course, is the parent company of Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp. Um, this is a story of decreasing digital ad spend. It's impacted rivals Twitter and Google, too. What do you think? Well, once again, just like with the macroeconomic environment, there has been a huge pullback in the amount that companies are willing to spend on advertising. In preparation for what many companies expect to be a slower period of economic growth, they are now starting to reduce the amount that they're spending on advertising, and that's really hitting Meta's bottom line. That's their number one line of business. So if less companies are spending on ads, then Meta is going to feel that. And on top of that, they're also feeling competitive pressures with platforms like TikTok beginning to pull users away from their traditional ad platforms of Instagram. And then they're also seeing this bigger issue of regulatory scrutiny, which is impacting their ability to make any acquisitions or do any moves that could boost the business. Yeah, TikTok is basically breathing down their neck in a, a new and more intense kind of way. Um, also on the horizon, there's the timing is interesting because COO Sheryl Sandberg, who was pretty instrumental in so many ways for this company, she's leaving soon. Those are some pretty big shoes to fill for Meta. Well, she was the real driver of the advertising business. You have to right. remember that when Mark Zuckerberg was building Facebook, which is what it was called at the time, that you know he was really the technical component. He built this incredible platform that people love to use. And Sheryl Sandberg came in and she really was the force behind the business side of the company. And that's generating revenue through ads and optimizing the platform and making it this go-to channel for millions of marketers and companies around the world. Now, as she leaves, it's going to be big, big shoes to fill, as you mentioned, and we'll have to keep an eye on who that might be, but there really needs to be somebody on that business side. I think that's what investors are looking for, which is another reason why they're so skittish around the stock. That's right, because stocks are forward-looking. I remember, fast fun fact, kind of uh, in 2013, visiting the Facebook headquarters in uh, Menlo Park, I believe, and the big question back then was, will Facebook be able to monetize uh, mobile? And uh, I guess the answer is yes in spades. Okay, they sure final did. topic. They sure did, right? 
Um, Shopify said it, it made a mistake. It went all in on e-commerce and now it's saying it got it wrong. Uh, the Canadian company's CEO announced the need to lay off 10% of its workforce because the company misjudged the growth of e-commerce, uh, which works out to a lot of people, Brett. I think there's a common theme here in all of these topics that we're talking about, which these lagging indicators. And so what was happening at the time, and you have to put yourself back into 2020 lockdown, is that as people were at home and they had more disposable income, they were turning to e-commerce to just buy a bunch of things. And that was their kind of form of entertainment at the time, since they didn't have to go out and uh, get dinner, get expensive dinners, uh, go on vacations. And so they were just buying a lot of stuff. And so you saw this massive spike in adoption of e-commerce. And Shopify thought that this was going to be a long term proposition that this is going to be the future and that it was only going to go up from here and so they hired a bunch of people to accommodate for that expected growth unfortunately that's not what happened sure e-commerce adoption did spike but it's also been in decline recently as people expectedly have gotten back out into the world and so they're having to now slow down as a result of that and they really made a bet and they got it wrong i think it's good of them for them to be honest about it but the tough thing is that the 10 percent of employees which is about a thousand employees that they're cutting that's primarily going to be here in canada so it is a, a significant job loss for us collectively that's right and it's part of this whole trend i mean i i find myself holding off on purchasing online when I have the option to go into the store instead and touch things and try things on, it's just so valuable. Um, I have another question for you though, Brett. Is this just kind of a Shopify strategic miscalculation or is it part of a broader tech right sizing or readjustment? And I don't wanna to get too much into the corporate jargon because we are talking about cutting people's jobs and their livelihoods, but layoffs happened in the last few months at Wealth Simple, Twitter and Netflix too. So it seems to be a trend. Yeah, absolutely. And so I think Shopify is particularly vulnerable to this because they had two trends going against them, which is one that they bet that this e-commerce boom would continue and that adoption would accelerate. So that never happened. But they were also victim to the same trend that every other tech company is experiencing right now. And that's this it's more that capital is more expensive, uh, that investors are more skittish on growth stocks and that there is a pullback from the market. So it's tougher for them to raise money. Now, if you're a company like Shopify, which is operating at either a minor profit or generally at a loss, then it's going to be tougher for you to raise money to close that gap. And so you have to pull back spending to get to profitability, to get to sustainably fat, to get sustainable, sustainable economics faster in order to continue to survive. And so it's these two competing trends that they're both victim to. Yeah, it sounds like shades of the Amazon model, you know, just Keep going until your rivals can't. Thank you so much for your time and your insight, Brett. Thanks, Anne. Always great to be with you. Enjoy what's left of your long weekend. And you can get all your daily business news with the Peak Daily podcast. It is available for free on Apple's podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you find your favorite podcasts.